Good morning, disciples. This is Charmel Dermitra, and you are watching Evangelically Millie. And you can call me Millie if you are a part of this family. Listen, I am just jumping on really quick because I have some footage to share with you. But I wanted to just say this. God hears our silent prayers. Those prayers that cannot be uttered. Those prayers that are just a cry out from our heart. He knows what we desire. You know, when we are walking according to his statutes, according to his laws and his commands, mm -hmm. we are purifying our hearts. We are purifying our mind and being renewed and transformed, okay? More so transformed by the renewing of our mind based off of Romans 12 too. So the more we resist the devil, he will flee from us. And therefore, and God knows the desires of our hearts and he knows the things that we want to pray about. And maybe we get tired and we've grown weary about praying for that. And we're questioning if God is hearing us like we it's it's a battlefield out here. Right. But just let me tell you that God hears your prayers, whether they are explicitly spoken and requested or silently. And I'm sharing that to say that last night, um, before I lay down in bed, I pretty much dotted all my um, I's and crossed all my T's because it was just a long day yesterday, but a very well productive day. And by the time I got back to my hotel room, I was more or less like, okay, Lord, I'm going to speak in tongues. It was at 10 p.m. exactly. I looked at the clock and it was 10 p.m. I started speaking in tongues. I spoke in tongues for an hour. And then after that, I was like, mm, I said, even though I spoke to a friend that God impressed upon my heart um, through a dream, I finally called her up and ministered to her about tithing. That's a whole nother video that I'll do later and read Malachi um, chapter four to her. I was still more or less like feeling like, no, I need to read because if any of you guys do know, I have shared in previous videos that I am on my second round of reading the Bible this year um, from cover to cover and I'm in the book of Luke. So I'm almost done. And I was like, you know, I, I want to read a little bit more of Luke. And so I got my Bible and I ended up reading Luke chapter two and I completed that chapter. So then as I lay down and before I look, close my eyes, I just... I couldn't even say it, but I was just like, oh, I just want to make sure. Like, it wasn't even a meditative prayer. It was just me talking to God, right? Which is what a lot of what prayer is. But I just said, Lord, I just want to make sure I'm in your perfect will. Like, how will I know I'm in your perfect will? And so today, you guys, is the day literally like that. He answered it for me. And I want you to watch these clips and just kind of see the glory of God and he's amazing he's magnificent and what he can do for me in the form of signs miracles and wonders without us seeking it out because he does tell us in the bible that a uh, um, adulterous and wicked generation seeks after a sign and he was saying this a lot more so when the pharisees kept testing him and kept saying you know shall we tithe who should we give our money to and so forth or um why doesn't your disciples wash their hands and eat on the sabbath and do all of these things why do you heal so they were testing him and just coming up against him with all these questions and they were just going on and on about you know how he navigated and and how jesus you know did his thing and how he moved in this world and so at the end of the day um they were constantly seeking after a sign or some type of wonder or some type of further evidence and proof than than what he was already doing i mean you see a blind man's eyes open i don't know which more you want you know yes he's the messiah and so anyways without further ado i don't want to digress too much god is faithful he answered my prayer i have living proof and you guys will see what that is so take care remember jesus gave his blood so you can be saved now behave i'll see you guys in the next video
Okay guys, so it is 5.41 a.m. on a Thursday afternoon. It is July 11th, 2024. And it is early, I'm here at work. I'm actually staying at the hotel on post. So it's a pretty busy hotel. But I had to go back to my hotel room to grab my phone so I can record the very first moment I picked up this key. I had spotted this key at 5.39 a.m. while I was walking my dog. And I just ran back to the hotel room and came back a couple minutes later to get this on camera, me picking up it up. I'm sharing this because this is the first key I have received since I've been saved. And prior to being saved, there was a lot of signs, wonders, and miracles that I would receive um, in nature. They would be keys, they would be rocks, they would be all different types of things. Now, I'm very skeptical and hesitant about um, ha having picked this up and I prayed. I said, Lord, do you really want me to pick it up? He was like, pick it up. Because when I wasn't saved, I did seek after these signs. I did put my hope and faith in finding these signs just to know that God is real, that God is with me, that, you know, God is speaking and everything. Um, it's been over a year since I've been saved. And like I said, this being the first key that I found, I don't know what it represents. But I do believe in the scripture that tells us that God will give us the keys to heaven. Okay. And so, um... This is just a symbolic reminder that God can give us keys to things and unlock things. Oh my gosh, this is the dream that I had. I had a dream about a week ago where God handed me a key. Wow. I'm going to pray on it because prior, like I said, in the um, BC days, before Christ days, I thought I was saved at that time. So as I was receiving things, um... I would get these keys and God would then reveal to me. Thank you, Jesus. He just dropped it down in my spirit right now what it means. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Forget the past. I'm not looking behind. I'm looking ahead and I'm pressing towards those things that are ahead. I did a video, I did a video not too long ago about these four prayers changed me and the four prayers that wrecked my life in a good way. And in those um, prayers I prayed about, um, you know, God revealing my, his perfect will, my high calling, um, and everything in my life. And, um, just last night I was like Lord I just want to make sure I'm in your perfect will like I don't want to make any wrong turns at this point I'm in fear and trembling regarding my salvation I don't ever want to go back to where you delivered me from yesterday something else positive happened that I can't speak on right now but I just you know I'm at the point where I just want to be make sure that I'm in God's perfect will that all my toiling all of my praying everything that I'm doing in his name and for his kingdom and for his glory and for me my healing and all of that is not in vain and I believe what he's telling me right now that this key represents <clears throat> and is symbolic of being either his high calling um, as of today stepping into his high calling or his perfect will I'm gonna pray on it a little bit further but it's definitely I felt like he was like this is the answer to your prayer you're in my perfect will as of today July 11th 2024 but you guys, I don't know if this is going to be the first of many or anything, but I'm just trusting the Lord. I know that I'm in a new season. I have a new life. I'm a new person in Christ. And so let's see what he does in Jesus' mighty name. I'll talk to you guys soon. You guys. I can't make this stuff up. I literally went back to the room after I picked up that key and my dog's la jumping on me and stuff, looking at me like, I wanna go for a little bit of walk, you know, cause before I just took him to use the restroom. So I said, okay, we got about um, until six. It's 5.51, you guys. And <laughs> I'm walking in this parking lot and I see this keychain, y'all. Again, 
prior BC days, the Lord gave me a prophecy and said he's going to start to give me keys. And those keys are going to, you know, be a part of the kingdom of heaven. And that he would present me a physical key and then a keychain to complete the set. As I'm walking just now, from the time I left the hotel room again, the Lord said, Charmiel, to confirm that key that you received, that golden key, does represent Romans 12 too, that you are on the right track and that you have received within yourself the ability to not be conformed to this world but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind and this is symbolic that you have stepped into my perfect will as of today as of july 11 2024 he and so he literally gave me the key and the completed set you guys listen what i've learned through this spiritual journey and just from not being saved and believing I was to now and seeing the difference, Satan does truly try to give you the counterfeit prior to the real thing. Anytime we are running this race, Satan will bring all types of similar copies, clones, counterfeits, anything that looks like the real thing or resembles the real thing that your heart desires, but it's fake. And we have to test the spirits. And one of the things is we have to be obedient. If anything that Satan presents us seems good, looks good, whether it's a spouse, whether it's a home, whether it is a relationship with a friend, a sister in Christ, whether it is a business or a job, we have to be willing to test the spirits, pray and seek God. Because if any of those things require you to transgress against any of the known command commandments of God, and it requires you to sell your soul in any capacity, whether it's to lie, cheat, whether it's to give up your body, whether it's to have sex or to fornicate prior to marriage and prior to that man making him your wife, then that is a counterfeit. It's just a counterfeit and it is when it's presented by the other person and you're lured into it as well because that's all deception and Satan is the father of lies. Okay, so you guys keep that in mind because this is serious and I'm raw. I'm real this morning, but I literally just received the key for my perfect will God's perfect will my heart desires is embedded in this perfect will so it's just as much as my perfect will as God's perfect will because he gives us the desires of our heart when we delight ourselves in him so praise be to God you guys wow stay tuned I might share this um as a quick clip as a reminder that God hears us he's listening and now he's giving keys he's giving keys to people he's going to start giving you keys and giving you access to things and so you guys just stay connected hi guys good morning so i am on my way to work i'm actually gonna go eat breakfast first and then eat um i'm sorry eat breakfast and then go ahead and go to my office so i can do my counseling sessions for a couple um, sets of service members that I have scheduled today but I wanted to follow up and say that I officially put the perfect will keychain um, set together this says hot girls hit curbs and I like this because when God oh I'm getting emotional oh I do not want to cry but as I picked this up and found this on my walk shortly after getting this God was just saying, Charmiel, don't worry. Don't freak out and think that you're going back to those old ways of relying on signs and wonders. He said, last night I heard your heart and you said, Lord, how do I know that I'm in your perfect will? When will I know? And he was like, so I'm giving you this key and this keychain set in one day to affirm to you that as of today, you officially stepped in my perfect will. But I want to go on and tell you guys what happened yesterday morning because I was going to record it, but I contemplated on it because I did not know all the details of the dream that I had and the nature thereof. But in short, in short, I was awakened at 2 a.m., exactly 2 a.m. last yesterday morning, right? So on the 10th. And I woke up from a dream. And in that dream, there was a series of different scenes, but the one main scene was that I was on a bus. And I was on this bus surrounded around a lot of people, other people, people that were familiar, um, people that I did not know. Um, but most of the people that I interact with, interacted with, I did know and knew of. <clears throat> 
but the bus was packed and there was a group of girls i was sitting on the right side in a seat regular bus seat right like a school bus and there was a group of white girls um where kylie jenner was sitting at and they were all like huddled up there and then there was a young a guy that i went to school with i'll tell you about that later that was directly behind me there was um two um a male and a female but the male had an amputated leg i'll tell you guys that a little later as well um but there was just different sets of people but in the dream as i was sitting there kylie jenner got up and started wiping off the seats she started white wiping down the seats and then i told her i said our friends dared me to um prank this man and i didn't know who this man was until he came up and so she was like our friends she was like okay and so you know in her voice and so then shortly after this heavy set black man walked on the bus and came and sat next to me and he put his arm around me and he was like like relieved and put his arm around me and then i was like i touched his thigh and i was like hi friend like i did it weird like i said it in genuinely but yet very like with an excitement and he looked at me like hmm something's different you know like she's playing or she's um you know embarrassed or whatever so then after i said that he took his arm from around me and like literally he got up and left and walked off the bus so then i felt embarrassed because the bus was filled with people and they knew that he came to be with me but i pretty much rejected him without explicitly rejecting him by calling him friend when he was looking at me more than just a friend he ended up leaving me and walking out on me and that was like um an embarrassment for me and so with that being said um shortly after he walked out and i'm like on my phone scrolling the guy that i went to grade school with like we were in multiple classes together from first to sixth grade during elementary he had the biggest biggest crush on me i know his name and i'm not gonna even say his name i don't feel released to say his name because god had already dealt with this that's why i'm telling you this dream but to make a long story short he was like whispering in my ear and leaning forward and i said i was like what did you tell him i was like every time i say something you people find out about it i was like what i was like what did you say and i was like you have a big mouth and like i was very like authoritative towards him but raw and straightforward and then shortly after that the scene switched to something completely different but then that's when i woke up at 2 a.m so in analyzing this dream and sitting up i started to speak in tongues from 2 to 3 a.m and then the beautiful thing about it is you guys i typically do an hour during the fourth watch right during actually the second third or fourth watch depending but most um recently not most recently but more frequently the lord typically wakes me up between 12 and 4 and that's when i will do um speaking in tongues and prayer and intercessory prayer for about an hour straight without stopping so when i woke up at 2 a.m i was immediately prompted to just go straight into speaking in tongues so i started to speak in tongues and after speaking in tongues i ended up um stopping right around 301 and then the holy spirit said i would like to keep talking like it was just a small whisper i would like to start keep talking and i was like wow and i just started to speak in tongues again because again what does the bible tells us the holy spirit makes intercessions intercessions for us and utters things that cannot uttered be uttered by us and he, he speaks all mysteries and things like that so when the holy spirit said i would like to keep talking i was like okay say less i'm gonna keep speaking so i spoke in tongues from 2 a.m to 4 a.m after that i knocked back out when i woke up um by five within the next hour that's when the lord began to download to me the meaning of this dream and he said he was like as of today the curse has been reversed because earlier this year the lord revealed to me that that guy that i went to school with who had the ma a massive crush on me 
I would always turn him down because I was not attracted to him. And he was like one of those Rogers in our life, you know, Rogers from Tia and Tamara. And he was always popping up, always asking me out, telling me you're going to be my wife and all of these things. But I kept, you know, turning him down. Well, earlier this year, the Lord revealed to me that he cursed me and he put a spell on me um, in various ways because not only did I hurt his feelings and turn him down, but he really wanted to be with me and so the this is serious and i i trust the lord and so i've been fighting this um demon and it was like god gave me some little ideas and understanding of some some of the things that he was saying and like cursing me and putting spells on me about like about future relationships not lasting and you know um the wrong men being attracted to me and it's real stuff and the lord revealed this to me so I was hoping it was done, but it wasn't until yesterday between the hours of 2 and 4 a.m. that it was broken, that that curse that he put on me was reversed and he no longer has effect. And then after I spoken, after I had waken up um, from the hour, I had an open vision again of that same bus. I was still sitting there. Everyone was still there and it was complete whereby I ended up having a Bible in my hand and I stood up in the front of the bus and Jesus was um, on my side and I began to read scripture. I began to read scripture and what ended up happening was a small fire from the back of the bus began and then it, as I was still speaking and reading the word of God that fire began to be kindled and get bigger and bigger and it went throughout all the bus to the front and right before it got to the very front Jesus walked me off the bus but as what I did see before it reached us the fire reached us everyone in that bus began to turn into ashes and i heard the voice of the lord say i'm giving you beauty for ashes so this is just a testament to you guys that there's people that are putting curses and spells on you and they're monitoring spirits and they don't even know that boy from my grade school that had a crush on me he was not only representing a monitoring spirit but every now and then whenever up to this point right for many many years for 30 years every time he would think of me the lord quickened and helped me understand that he his thoughts about me and towards me and the desire to still be with me it was like a unwanted soul tie it was an unauthorized soul tie because of the spell and the um wicked um request he was making about trying to be with me but how many of you know when you're the lord's child there's no weapon formed against you that will prosper now there may have been some prospering in some ways with the relationships that i ended up with that did not last because um i just did not know and yes we perish for a lack of knowledge but now that i knew who ha was behind some of the curses and spells in my life concerning love and relationships I was able to take it to the Lord and focus and fast and pray concerning that and break it. And yesterday morning, between the hours of 2 and 4 a.m., by me speaking in tongues and then me having an open vision that completed that confirmation that it was broken and that it was no longer in effect and everyone turned into ashes, including him. It's just a beautiful thing to know now that the curse is reversed. And look, one day later, the Lord blesses me gives me a fresh start and blesses me with a key and it says again hot girls hit curves because as i was walking back to the hotel with this key um chain the lord said yes you you have fallen short of my glory in different ways you've hit curbs you've you know you've tumbled you've you've fallen but you've gotten back up and he was like and that makes you hot not just hot in the sense of how the world thinks like oh that woman's hot but no you are hot you are not when it comes to my word when it comes to my kingdom you are on fire for me you do not you are not lukewarm but you are hot water you are neither um cold water nor lukewarm but you are hot water look at god praise be to god listen i can't make this stuff up i'm not as smart to make these things up and the timing and spaces and all that i just i'm not but i just wanted to share that with you guys and let you know that if you suspect that perhaps an ex someone and that's just that's just in part i summed it up but the heavy set male that walked off the bus was the ex that I have been sharing testimonies about who was 
a different believer, um, believed in something different than I did. He was Muslim and whom I was actively trying to have kids with. The Lord revealed to me that um, he walked he walked off or um, walked away and um, all of that as just more confirmation that I've had throughout this whole time that his he because of our interactions and the hostility and the toxicity in the relationships that we had when we did have it he no longer felt like connected enough to me to be faithful and obviously those were some of the things that I dealt with while I was in a relationship with with him is him walking out on me and I knew because God was giving me dreams and just my womanly intuition and everything I, he was you know messing around on me and obviously he had another woman that he was taking care of so it was just a hot mess situation so I just wanted to share with you guys that after everyone went by the time me and Jesus walked off the bus and that bus flew up and went in flames and everyone became ashes, Jesus led me to that man and I waved the Bible in front of him and he also turned into ashes. So God is just showing me that the more I stay in my word and the more that I live by the word and that is my sword, that is my um, that is my weapon, um, my spiritual weapon to take up in any and all spiritual warfare. And yeah, it's just, it's just a blessing to know that I'm breaking these curses. I'm breaking these soul ties because I'm staying in my word. I'm reading it and I'm not only being a hearer of it, but a doer also. So I encourage you guys that if you do suspect that there's a curse, a um, unhealthy soul tie that is lingering and there's any other residue with people, places and things that are no longer serving you and that are wreaking more havoc in your life and blocking your blessings or causing more delays in your blessings, then fast during um, the day or however often the Lord leads you speak in tongues during third and fourth watch hours and then rebuke and bind and of course stay in your word because the word of God is active and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword and so it will be able to pierce through um, bone marrow and it is the deep discerner of the tensions of the heart so that's going to heal you automatically as you stay in your word so that's what i wanted to share with you guys god is gracious god is good he is faithful and loving and as of yesterday after i had that i went to pizza hut and something happened i'm not going to speak on it but i will share it later just mark this or you know bookmark this video. All right, you guys will take care. I love you with the love of Jesus. God is good. And I'm so thankful to know that as of today, July 11, 2024, I am officially in the perfect will of God. And I like to show receipts because, you know, some people are skeptical. Um, we have a lot of skeptics here. So it is Thursday, July 11, 7.52 a.m. Okay, you guys. Well, take care. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.